Hi, and welcome to Biostock Studio. Ablevo develops treatments for primary mitochondrial diseases, and their lead candidate, KL1333, is right now undergoing a potentially pivotal phase two study. I am joined by CEO Ellen Donnelly, who will tell us more. Welcome, Ellen. Thanks, Cecilia. So let's start with a fairly basic question. What is Ablevo's vision? Oh, that's a great question. So our goal is to become a global leader in the development of medicines for mitochondrial medicine. And so these are mitochondrial diseases or diseases that affect your mitochondria or the cell, the organelles in your body that produce energy. So every one of your cells in your body has mitochondria and they're responsible for generating the energy that your cell needs to do work during the day. And so we're developing therapies for patients that suffer from diseases that have a mutation in their mitochondrial DNA. So KL1333, it's not completely easy to say, but I think no. I've got it. That's right now undergoing a potentially pivotal phase two study. Yep. If this drug works the way you hope, how will it help patients? Right, it's a great question. So the drug is a modulator of two key coenzymes in the mitochondria. And these enzymes, if they're not at the right levels, the, ends, the mitochondria can't produce energy. And so the cells can't do their jobs. And so we're looking at two symptoms of the disease in this study. We're looking at the symptoms of fatigue and myopathy or muscle weakness. And so what we hear from the patients is that most of the things that cause them the most concern and the symptoms that are the most debilitating are actually their fatigue because they can't hold jobs, they can't go to the grocery store, and their muscle weakness because they often have to use aids in walking because their muscles are so weak. And so this drug, KO1333, we hope will address those two symptoms of the disease. And these, these diseases are rare. How many potential patients, if that's an expression, are there? Right, so in the group of primary mitochondrial diseases, we think the prevalence is about one in 5,000. So these do classify as an or orphan disease, um, and thus we can get an orphan drug designation for these. Um, so they're rare, but they're big enough to have a useful population. Um, and so that's helpful. They're also, these patients are really well organized um, through centers of excellence. We also have patient advocacy groups that help these patients. So it's nice because they're, they're rare, but they're organized and, and we know where they are and we have good access to them. So that helps us. So the study is up and running. What is the latest update in terms of patient recruitment? Oh, right, thank you. Um, so the study started in December and we started and activated our two sites in Denmark. Um, and the UK, and now we've continued to activate more sites and we're starting to screen patients. And so this study is a little bit different than most studies and that, that screening period is actually quite long. It can be up to eight to 12 weeks for each patient. So it takes us a little bit longer to dose our first patient, but we have great important data in that first eight to 12 weeks that will help us in the study. So that's the, that's the progress. Right now we're just continuing to activate our sites and screen our first patients. So continuing on the theme of, of patients there. Uh, how many patients will you need to recruit in total? Right, so right now we're recruiting the, to the interim analysis. So in that group of patients, we'll have 40 patients. They'll be treated for six months. And after they've been treated for six months, we'll, we'll do the interim analysis. And in that, it's a blinded review done by an external committee. And they'll come back and tell us if the drug was useful or not useful, and we call that futile. So if the drug's futile, the study stops. But if the drug seems to be working, um, we will re continue to recruit patients anywhere from 120 total patients in the study to 180. And I have referred to this study several times as potentially pivotal. What does that actually mean? Yeah, the use of potential always gets people. So we call it a potentially pivotal study because we don't know if it's going to be pivotal until we have the data from the study. And we don't want to overpromise things that we can't actually deliver on. So what happens at the end of the study is we take the full data set to the FDA and the EMA and we say, okay, here's our set of data. Do you think that this qualifies and shows you that the drug is efficacious and safe in this patient population and thus we should go for approval? And it's that conversation that we have that will determine whether this is pivotal, meaning that this is the study we need in order to go for registration and get this drug on the market. So to sum up, what are the main goals for Oblevo for 2023? Yeah, so our main goal is the study. Obviously, getting the patients recruited into this study, it's a rare disease, so that isn't easy. So we have a whole team focused on recruiting this study. Um, at the same time, we have a second asset, NV354, which we're looking to progress further with our internal efforts to get that ready for the clinic. And obviously, we'll try to do other things, meet with investors, present at mitochondrial meetings. One of the meetings that we're excited to go to in June is a annual or biannual 
mitochondrial disease med medicine meeting called Euromit. And that will give us an opportunity to meet with patients, physicians, talk about our study, and present our data. So that happens in June. So we'll be out there talking to people and making sure they understand what our goal is, our vision, and how important our study is. Then we have learned more about Obliva and the ongoing, potentially pivotal, phase two study with KL1333. Thank you so much for coming, Ellen. Thanks, Cecilia.